This video is going to be uh, talking about simplifying variable expressions. This is for uh, pre-algebra chapter 2.3. Um, one of the things that uh, the prerequisites for this, uh, and one of the things I would suggest doing, is just kind of making sure that you uh, f are pretty comfortable with adding and subtracting, multiplying, and dividing all your sort of simple negative numbers. <coughs> going to be uh, pretty essential here. So make sure that you uh, understand how to do those. If you need to go to Khan Academy or just really sort of any website and um, practice that, that would be very helpful. So if you find yourself making some mistakes along the way, just with some of those simple operations, then I would pause, look back over those things, practice some more, and then come back to this. Okay, so let's move on. First thing we got to do is this is going to be kind of heavy on vocabulary to begin with. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these words. Uh, first, the things we're going to talk about here are going to be their terms. These are known as the parts of an expression. And feel free at any point just to pause the video, write the stuff down. You can always back up. That's the beauty of doing this uh, lesson online like this. Um, okay, so that's the first one. We have variable terms. These are the parts of uh, a, an expression with uh, variables. Okay. Then we have a coefficient. This is the number attached to the variable, also known as how many there are. Also, the number that you multiply a variable by. Then we have a constant term. Okay, This is a number without a variable. A number like a uh, constant term would be something that doesn't change. So like the number 4. The number 4 is always going to be number 4. It's constantly 4. Therefore, it doesn't change. It is not a variable. That's called a constant term. Okay. And then we have this idea of called like terms. And these are terms that have identical parts. Um, these are the things that we're going to combine. Uh, you know, they're the things that, uh, like they said, they're alike. They're, uh, <clears throat> well, you'll see. So let's take a look at this. Let's just, uh, it's a lot easier, I think, if we uh, take all of these different parts and sort of apply them in a way. All right. So here is a variable expression. Now hopefully you have your graphic organizer, you filled that out, and you understand that a variable expression is just a math sentence that has um, variables in it. Okay? So there's notice there's no equal sign. We are not making this equal to something. Okay? Equal just means same as. We're not using this to solve. We're just going to simplify, okay? And when we do these, we're just going to make it shorter. So instead of 5x plus 3x minus 7 plus 9, we're going to combine the parts here that we can, uh, that are alike. Well, first, let's go ahead and identify some of these things. First, where are my terms? Well, the terms are going to be any, each and every one of these parts, okay? Each of these is a term. So what's important to understand, though, and this is the part where students often get confused, mixed up, is that these terms are all going to be identified as either positive or negative. You have to make sure that you identify, is this a positive term or a negative term? Is this going up or is it going down? So the first thing we're going to look at is <coughs> this 5x here. This is going to be a positive 5x, right? The 5x here is going up. Then we have another. We're adding a positive 3x, so this is going to be a positive 3, 3x. Now, this is minus or subtracting 7. So we're taking away a positive 7, which means that 7 is going down. So essentially, we can say that this is actually negative 7, OK? Because that 7 is going down. And then finally, that last one is adding a positive 9. So that's going to be going up, OK? So when we do this, um, we need to combine parts that are like, OK? So well, first of all, let's look at sort of um, the different parts here. Uh, 5x and 3x, those are both going to be variable terms, OK? That's part of this, this part up here, this terms, OK? These are all variable terms. We also are going to have constant terms. Now, the constant terms, let's go ahead and we're going to, uh, let's make those green. Okay, so we have constant terms. Okay, constant terms are going to be these. These are the ones that don't change. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight those. So we have nine and seven, and the negative. Okay, and then this one is positive. Okay, so we have negative seven and positive nine. Those are my constant terms. Okay, these other ones, right? Five x and three x. Those are going to be my variable terms. And what I'm really going to look at here is I'm going to look at coefficients. Let's go ahead and turn those orange. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll identify these, the coefficients. Okay. 
right? Now, if you remember from before, a coefficient is the number attached to the variable. It's not the actual variable itself. It's how many of those variables we have. So in this case here, we have 5x's. So my coefficient is 5. And here, I have 3x's. So my coefficient would be 3. Okay, and what's po good to notice, note, note here that this is a positive 5 and this is a positive 3. Okay, those are my coefficients. Now, when we go ahead and combine these things, we're going to combine our like terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the parts that are the same, right? Before we said, okay, <coughs> these parts here, those are both variable expressions with the same var or variable terms with the same variable and these are both constant terms okay and so what we're going to do is we're going to combine those together all right so these are the like ones okay so 5x and 3x together if i go up 5x and i add another 3x together that makes 8x and i'm going to have <coughs> negative 7 plus 9 right so down 7 up 9, that's going to give me a positive 2. So now this is my simplified expression. Okay. Now what I want you to notice is that I cannot actually add this 8x, this 8x here, and this 2. You cannot combine them together. Okay. Because this is really saying 8 of some number. We don't know what x is. It's some number, but we're not sure what it is. But whatever it is, we have 8 of them. Okay. So let's say x was 5. Okay. If f, if x equals 5. Then that means we would have 8 5s, right, which would be 40. And then we would add 2. OK? We would add 2. That equals 42. OK? Now, if you made the mistake and said, oh, you know what? I have 8x and 2. That makes 10x, OK? If x is 5, then what you're saying here is that this is worth 50. Okay, and this 50 and this 42 are not the same. Okay, you can't do that. <coughs> All right, so let's move on. Let's do a little more practice. Why don't you go ahead, pause the video, and why don't you try try doing this one on your own? Okay, let's do this. Hopefully you did okay on this. If not, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify our like terms. And I'm going to rearrange this, okay? Now, one of the things I always like to do is I like to take everything and give it its uh, identify whether or not it's positive or negative, okay? So first, this is a negative 3x. This is going to be a positive 1. This is a positive 2x. And this, since I'm going down 5, I change this to adding and make it a negative 5. Now, the reason I do this is so that when I'm adding, I can add in any order. And now what I can do is I can rearrange this using, right, putting the variable terms in the front and then the constant terms at the end. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, here's a variable term and here's a variable term. So these two together, I'm going to write negative 3x plus 2x. Okay, and then here I have right a positive 1 and a negative 5 okay now notice notice i have adding in between each of them because it's just like saying and i have negative 3x and a positive 1 and a positive 2x and a negative 5 when you do it that way you can just identify what they are and then you can add or subtract them in any order okay so that's the purpose of that okay so then plus negative 5 Okay, now I'm in a position where I can combine my like terms. If I have negative 3x and positive 2x, okay, this is down 3 and this is back up 2, so that's going to give me negative x, negative 1x, right? And then when I add negative or a positive 1 and negative 5, that's going to give me a negative 4, okay? So I can say negative x plus negative 4. And if I wanted to write this actually the most simple way I possibly could, I would say negative x, and then I could just write minus 4. That says the same thing. OK, hopefully you're getting the hang of it. Let's try another one. Why don't you go ahead and do this one. Maybe identify your terms, your like terms, your constant terms. Go ahead from there. Go ahead and try it. OK, so let's do this. Again, I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this into a giant addition problem. So I'm going to go from 4x, OK? This is a positive 4x, okay? 
And then I'm going to look over here, and this is another x, so then I'm going to make this, well, let's see, I'm subtracting one of them, so that's going to be like going down one x. And then I have a, ver a constant term here, down 6, so that's like a negative 6. And then I'm going to make this addition and a negative 5. Now, I'm going to rewrite this so that all of my terms are together. So I have positive 4x plus negative x plus negative 6 plus negative 5. And now I can go ahead and combine my like terms. 4x and negative x makes 3x. And I'll have negative 6 and negative 5 is negative 11. Okay, if I want to say, it, say this again, if I want to write this a little bit simpler, 3x minus 11. Okay, let's go ahead, let's try one more here. Okay, let's again identify and put everything, uh, make it a giant addition problem first. Okay, negative 8, good. Positive 5, that's a positive 5x. And a positive 3. Okay, and I'm going to make this plus a negative 7x. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So I've got 5x plus negative 7x plus negative 8 plus 3. Now I can go ahead and combine my like terms here. 5x and negative 7x is going to give me negative 2, right? Because I'm really just adding the coefficients. That's the whole idea of identifying the coefficients. I have 5 of these. I have negative 7 of those. When I combine them, I have negative 2 of them. Okay. Here, I have negative 8 and positive 3. So that's going to give me, and I have negative 5. So if I want to rewrite this a little bit simpler, I could do negative 2x minus 5. Okay? And this one, you could leave it this way. This is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just this one here is a little bit less work, a little bit more to the point. Okay. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to practice this at home so that when you come to class, you're a little bit more prepared, maybe you have some more specific questions. So that way, when we work on this, we have some, some, a, a good place to start. So I want you to go on to Khan Academy, go into combining like terms. If you start struggling with that, then we can come in, you can practice in class, and I can help you with those as well, okay? Now, if you feel like you're totally getting this, you can go ahead and there, uh, you can um, uh, challenge yourself with combining like terms. That would be the next one, okay? Combining like terms, sorry, with distribution. All right, if, you, uh, if you're going to try that one, I would suggest uh, watching the video on there um, if you get stuck. It's used to this idea called the distributive property. If you've never seen the distributive property or never heard of it, then you might want to look that up as well. Uh, I'm not going to expect you to know how to do this right away. I will expect you to know how to do it a little bit later. But for right now, let's just go ahead and uh, practice uh, combining like terms. And if you feel like you want to challenge yourself, go ahead to the next spot. Okay, good luck and uh, have some fun with it.